Hi, Ben. How are you? Hey, good, Stephen. How are you, buddy? Good. It's a long time no see. And uh, what's happening with you? Um, lots going on, actually. Um, uh, two small kids uh, living on the Central Coast, doing a lot of work um, on a variety of projects that involve video recording and editing and original compositions and um and doing a lot of youtube stuff actually at the moment and designing short courses uh for songwriting and composition so yeah spreading myself thin did you get affected by the floods this year in the central coast we were, no we were really lucky we're just in a particular part of the central coast that um didn't get too badly affected so we were okay yeah it's always thanks flooding. for asking up in Lismore, the central coast, three times this year, Ben, there's been so many floods. It's flooded down where I am. Uh, just want it to end, and hopefully it does. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, th I think Lismore's – I mean, I studied uni in Lismore. Um, mm -hmm. So I was I lived up there for a little while, and it's, it's a really pretty town, and it's a real shame that it's been hit twice, and it looks like it's going to get hit again. So I hope, I hope it's not as bad as, uh, as they've projected, and, yeah, they can get through – to next year yeah because we're in the la nina season as well yeah yeah but how's the music industry uh, for you because um I, I started independent in 2020 my life i'm not signed mm. with any label what about mm. yourself what, what, what work have you been doing lately uh well i've i've never been um i mean i've always been independent uh, you know in in a variety of ways but um I think the thing that has shifted for me recently, I mean, I'm still writing a lot of songs and I'm still, I'm still working on a lot of music, creating a lot of, you know, original music. But I think for me, the big shift in the last year and a half has been um, trying to reinvent myself musically during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been a pretty, been, been a pretty weird two and a half years. So halfway through the pandemic, I started doing some live streaming. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I spent sort of six, seven weeks live streaming. And that was really interesting because it was something I had never considered doing. And I decided to just, you know, use all my camera gear and use all my audio gear and basically turn the studio into, into a little, you know, live streaming setup. Uh, and that was great. And it really tested me. And I was streaming two or three times a week and I had to keep coming up with, you know, things to do and talk about. But what was great about that was, it kind of then launched this whole new business model that I've got going now with, um, with my business partner, Kepi Coots. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, we launched this uh, business called how to write songs uh, on YouTube. And, and from there, we've just been growing that business and really, you know, setting ourselves the challenge of breaking down the songwriting and the compositional process mm. and trying to talk about it in these bite-sized chunks for people who are interested or people who, need a little bit of help with technique or or craft so that's been the last year and a half of us going pretty hard on that and now we're starting to look at designing short courses on udemy and um just just playing in that space more and more so yeah for me it's it's about doing a lot of video work a lot of video um, production work and then writing songs and doing original score for projects when they come up yeah i actually my composition story, I came across royalty-free libraries. Uh, oh, yeah. It was, in 2020, he made a cold call to a film composer, and he, he says, uh, how much are you selling the tracks for? I said, oh, three bucks, because I thought you could do an iTunes price. He said, he says to me, how are you going to eat doing that? And that's when I came yeah. across, you know, Vado and Pond5, Motion Elements. So I'm on yeah. two. I tried in Vado. That was too hard for me. Mm. It's too much. Five times kept rejecting my work, so I was like, "Not nah, bugger it." Um, right. Have you thought about the royalty-free libraries yourself? Um, it's one of those things where I I haven't done it. Mm -hmm. um, I sort of thought about it, but um, I used to, you know. So I have a I have a, um, a a licensing agreement with Gray Area Sound, who who supply Big Bang and Fuzz, and and that's. It's more of the, the old production library idea where, you know, there's these huge catalogs of, of songs and instrumental compositions, and then, you know, people tap into them and license them for various projects. 
I sort of did that for a little bit. Uh, I briefly did that and I kind of enjoyed it. Um, but I realized that I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really happier coming up with, uh, my own music mm -hmm. for, um, specific projects now, you know, so, so, you know, taking on projects where I can write original score specifically to the project, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say no to doing, to doing that kind of stuff in the future. I, I wouldn't rule anything out. It's just, it's just not something that I've, I haven't spent a lot of time investigating it, Stephen. So I'd be curious to know what your insights are like what have you learned from from doing it just overcoming rejection because all my music that's on spotify i put it there to sell so people want to use it for their film uh you right. know production and not having to worry about a royalty check from apra once a year so that's that's what i've done i believe yeah. in being flexible plus i put them on Bandcamp as well yeah. but it's i think it's just yeah you've got to be consistent with it you know just yeah. keep doing it yeah and i sort of I, i'm thinking about uh it's interesting you know the more and more i put music out the more i see spotify and bandcamp and soundcloud or wherever you want to host your music mm. I, I really see them as as not money making avenues mm. i see them more as um really great ways to um contain your portfolio you know, mm -hmm. so you can send links to people and say, here's a new track or here's a, here's a set of instrumental compositions. It's, it's, it's an easy place to have your music that you can then sh direct people or show people. Mm. And in that way, it's like a virtual business card, you know, and, and it, it also gets you, I think this was the thing that really interested me about streaming. You know, you're having conversations with people in real time and you're making music in real time. And I think, we as musicians just need to keep finding ways to be visible mm. uh, in, in a market that is really saturated with a lot of music mm. uh, and a lot of artists. We need to keep finding ways to be visible and keep having the conversation so that people may find our work online and say, hey, I've got a project coming up. Would you be interested? You know, we just we just have to keep putting it out there so we can keep having those conversations. That's how I'm starting to think more about well, uh, it. That's exactly right. Because my, I've distributed with CD baby. It's like 50, mm. $60 for just for a single, you know, mm. that's mm. a lot of money just to put it, put your work out there. So mm. um, I went to um, United masters. They're free, but then, you know, you've got to pay extra if you want to submit to ESPN. So I feel the music industry is ripping people off for years. <laughs> Well, it's I think the thing about the music industry is it, it is changing so quickly. Um, mm. I feel like this period of change is, is, has to be one of the most rapid periods of change the industry has ever undergone. And it's doesn't, it doesn't appear to be slowing down. Mm. You know, we've got AI, you know, coming into play more and more. We've got new platforms. Streaming, of course, has become huge. Mm. So I think it's one of those things where it, it has always been a difficult industry. The challenge for us as composers and musicians and artists is how do we respond to the change? Like what, what can be the new avenues of revenue making and of exposure that we need to use? Um, Cause it, you know, it, I don't think, I don't think the old model works or I don't think uh, it helps to think about it like we used to even five, six years ago. I don't think it helps to think about it like that anymore. It has, it has, it has moved quickly yeah. exactly right i mean i'm listening to 50 cents um uh, autobiography on audible and talking about mm. partnership with vitamin water have you thought about partnering corporations and businesses like adidas and all that and red bull because red bull literally have a music company you know that totally yeah yeah red bull's got i mean it's, it's a really interesting thing that a company like red bull has has this label um mm. i i I, I, yeah, I, I think you've got to, I think in a way it's gotten really complicated and in another way it's gotten really simple. And the, mm. the simplicity is that you just have to put out, you just have to put your work out there. You know, you just have to put it out there and you have to put out, put it out there as often as possible and to as higher, you know, the quality has to be as high as you can manage given that frequency is also becoming such a big deal. And then you've got to just be open to, I think you said it before, you've got to be flexible. Mm. You've got to be flexible to partnerships. You've got to be flexible to um, trying to get sync 
opportunities with the music, you know, trying to get it placed in television. Um, the, the exciting thing about TV is that, you know, there's never been a better time to try and get sync mm. licenses with TV. There are so many TV productions. There is, you know, there are how many streaming services now making original content. And mm. so if you're a composer, um, there is a lot of content being made that needs music. You know, there's a lot of new shows coming out every week and, and that's exciting if you're a composer or a musician. Oh, exactly. And, and one day if you do get that dream role, yeah, take as many opportunities as you can, you know. Mm. Um, have you thought about signing to a record label when you were younger? <laughs> I was never... Um, I think my music that I made was always a little too obscure. Mm -hmm. Well, it was always just, you know, it just moved around and I was... I, I never, um, I never really thought about a label. I never chased a label. So, and by chasing, I mean, I never, I never really took the steps that you probably need to take to start having that conversation because I didn't really know what to do. I was just really interested in being at uni, learning how to play guitar as well as I could. I fell in love with songwriting and composition. I then studied film and TV at afters because I really wanted to learn how to, um, you know, how to get specific with my compositional skills and, and apply it to film and TV. And I think I was always a little too interested in just the craft of music making. And, and I wasn't business savvy enough to, to really have those conversations. So mm. it didn't feel like it was ever really on the cards, you know, for me. And, and I wasn't making music really that was that commercially viable, um, mm. you know, in, in my early days. And I don't think I've really changed <laughs> that much mm. since so yeah it was never really a, a conversation i i had to have yeah you, it sounds like you've always worked hard all your life you know? <laughs> i think that goes for most anyone who decides to try and make music full-time i think that's yeah that's but tell that's me the, uh, that's the deal live streaming because i've got a idea i do a the music show on my youtube with live streaming and i find it's harder especially when right. you're on your own and you're talking to like literally no one. How have you coped with that? How do you keep a conversation going? Well, I didn't, I didn't do it for very long. Um, I did it for like, like I said, I sort of did seven weeks, I think. And, um, and I was really into it for those seven weeks. I stopped doing it because I think exactly what you're saying. I, you know, the numbers sometimes were, was, were okay, but the numbers were sometimes also very small, you know, two or three people. We're on the other side. And um, it is a weird thing, right? When you're basically sort of talking to the camera or talking to yourself and people are coming and going on the other end. The way I dealt with it was I, I tried to do a lot of collaborations. So I started doing this thing where I wanted to play around with mind mapping uh, songs. I wanted to actually pull up a virtual mind mapping tool uh, called Miro. Mm -hmm. And I would get on a Zoom call with some of my fellow songwriters and some of my friends and say, hey, do you want to do, do a live stream where we start with a songwriting prompt and then over the next two hours, we try and break it down and we draw all these weird lines going to bubbles and see if we can write a song in, in a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. So I think the key to live streaming, the people who do it really well and successfully are the people who do what they were going to do anyway. Mm. You know, it, it, some people we're going to practice guitar for two hours anyway on Tuesday morning. Mm. And so the only difference is they have their cameras set up and they press go, they press, you know, stream. And then they have the conversation with people who happen to be interested, but that's the way I think you sustain it. You just do the thing that you wanted to do anyway. Mm. And you, and you um, adapt the behavior slightly for an audience as they, as they pop in and out. So that was, that was how I tried to do it. Do the things that I wanted to do anyway, like write songs, play sly guitar, um, experiment with different um, pedals and plugins and production techniques. Mm. And I also got other people involved and did a bunch of duo stuff and collaborations. That, that's how I made it you know, interesting enough to, to do it for a little while. Yeah, that maybe I've got to look at doing that in the future instead of just talking music journalism, because that's what I've been experimenting with journalism yeah in music what do you what do you um 
how do you structure it when you say journalism do you sort of pick a topic and then dive yeah. deep or what do you yeah do? just a like short like a tabloid what the new york post would do about taylor swift or music oh, okay. festivals just what's going yeah. on in the music industry yeah it's yeah. good experience but, but what you know I, do you believe that um we have to be suited for live streaming or is it for everyone not at all no i don't think it i don't think it's um I don't think it's suitable for a lot of people. And I would, and I would say you absolutely don't have to do it. It's just one thing that, um, I tried, uh, that, you know, was really enjoyable and taught me a few things, uh, about my own process. But again, you know, I, I, I lasted like seven weeks. So it's clearly, I'm not someone who likes live streaming enough to keep doing it. Um, it, it taught me though, that I do, I do actually love making videos. So, mm. I turned all of the, um, all of the lessons I learned from live streaming. I then I put those into the YouTube channel mm. and I'm much more comfortable making YouTube videos. I'm much more comfortable scripting out, you know, or creating a script on a, on a particular topic mm -hmm. and then filming that and editing it and doing graphic overlays and actually, actually going through the editing process. I like editing. I like editing videos. I like editing audio too. So, for some people, I think the live stream is great because they don't like editing and they get to just, you know, do it on the fly and whatever happens, happens. Mm. For me, I, I think I do enjoy the editing process and creating a product, you know, with a, you know, with more detail thrown in. Yeah, I found with live streaming, sometimes the telephone rings and people pick it up in the background or the mower. That, it, that's harder too, because I think... You know, I try to prepare it a week in advance, but um, mm. if the conversation's wrapped up in 10 minutes, I wrap it up, you know. Mm. It's a total, I think we're still getting used to what it is. I think mm. live streaming is so new. And, you know, the rise of platforms like Twitch have been such a big deal. Um, but we're still, we're still trying to work out, you know, what it is and how it works. And, and we're trying to work out you know, what the right code of conduct is. And some people do, you know, they have conversations on their phone in the background. And I, I know friends who actually subscribe to certain streamers mm. um, and just have them on in the background, you know, on us on another monitor. They, it just like while they're working, they just have them there doing their thing. And it's, it's such an interesting form of entertainment now. And the fact that people pay for the, for these mm. subscriptions, like they would pay for Netflix or, or another, you know, um, streaming service. Mm. I just think it's really new. It's really fascinating. And we just don't, we, we haven't had enough time to really get our heads around all the nuances. So, yeah. yeah. Social audio, uh, Spotify, Green Room, um, Clubhouse got popular in the lockdown. Yeah. Um, I tried Clubhouse with it's too, too overpopulated. Spotify, Green Room, I remember two weeks, they had all this traffic and that died out then. Right. So I, I use one called Wisdom where I do my, my morning podcast on it. It's just like a radio show. Yeah. And I think social audio is for me. I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So have you thought yeah. about social audio yourself, apps? I guess I feel like um I guess I feel like the YouTube channel is my version of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I if I if I had to pick one, it, YouTube just felt like the right the right medium for what I want to do and, mm -hmm. and what Kepi and I, again, you know, because I'm working with someone else, Kepi and I do all this, you know, or most of the scripts together. We do most of the filming together. We take turns editing different parts, you know, so it's a, it's a really enjoyable process because I'm doing it with someone else. Um, but also, you know, we, we may go to social audio at some point that may become one of the things we do, but, I'm doing Patreon as well. Yeah. So we started a Patreon page um, and, and we do w monthly um, online sessions with our patrons, you know, where we do live Q and a and feedback on their original songs. So I think making YouTube videos, doing the Patreon, designing short courses on Udemy. I feel like that that's, I'm, I'm still trying to get my head around all the new platforms mm. that I'm currently part of. I, I feel like there's, there's a bunch out there that I haven't tried and I'll, I'll probably get round to them, but at the moment I'm, I'm kind of just, yeah, trying to do a few at a time. Yeah. 
I mean, we lived in such an online world back for the last two years. Um, mm. it, it was just, it was weird virtual world. I mean, we're podcasting virtually, of course. Um, of course. But how did you miss that human interaction? Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Um, yeah, it was weird. It, you know, it definitely was. Look, it's it's one of those things, again, we're still, I think we're still trying to get our heads around what has just happened over mm. the last two and a half years. And we're still trying to work out what the flow on effects of that are. I mean, I I teach um, songwriting and composition and a, you know, a couple of subjects, other subjects at JMC Academy in Sydney. Mm -hmm. and And I did online classes with my students for a year, you know, we were doing zoom classes, just like we're doing here. It was really hard for the students. Mm. Like it was really tough because you, you only find out what you're losing. Um, or you only find out what's missing when you're forced to do zoom lessons or online lessons every week, you know, week after week. And you, and you, I guess I never realized how much happens in a classroom, just physically noticing, different cues or but just, just being in the room with each other, all the little gestures and all the little mannerisms that help, you know, you communicate an idea and, and help you understand if people are actually getting the idea. Um, so, yeah, I think it was, it was really tough on them. And for me, gigs not being, you know, gigs got shut down. I didn't see, I didn't see a lot of friends for a long time. Um, Ironically, I reconnected with, or maybe appropriately, I reconnected with a, a couple of friends who I haven't seen in years just because we could jump on a Zoom call. <laughs> and actually, so that was kind of weird. I lost touch with some of the friends that I would normally see in person and I reconnected with friends who I hadn't seen in years just because we could jump online. So yeah, I, I, I think in general, it was tough. And the fact that we're getting back in person for most things is, is great. No, are you teaching on campus at JMC at the moment or are you still? Yeah, online? absolutely. Yeah. We've been back on campus all year this year and which has been great. It's, it's been so nice to get back into the classroom and just connect with the students in the same room. Um, it, it's yeah, it's amazing. No, that, that's it. You know, and um, what else is happening for you for the rest of the year? Ben? what are you, what are you going to be up to? Uh, well, I'm working on, I got a, a interesting and, and this goes back to the live streaming conversation. Um, I, I know Twitch is a big, uh, it's a big platform for gaming mm. video games. And I was doing a live stream where I was kind of experimenting with, um, kind of like some cinematic instrumental techniques. And, um, I can't remember exactly how it happened, but these guys came on the chat and they, we'd kind of been introduced by some mutual friends who I, you know, uh, who we met a long time ago, but they're two video game developers. Um, and they, they have, they've been working on this game for, uh, for a long time and they really liked the music that I was mm -hmm. making, you know, cause I was just making some, some instrumental, uh, stuff focusing on the slide guitar. And, um, and we ended up having a conversation that developed and through that conversation, uh, we've now created an agreement where I'm going to be composing the, um, the music for their video game, you know, mm -hmm. um, which is going to, that's going to take, you know, the next six months or so. Um, so it's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, I've already started working on quite a few of the compositions, but that's really exciting because, um, you know, video games are so, they're so interesting from a mm -hmm. compositional point of view. It's kind of using film techniques, but, the implementation is really different and you're thinking about proximity and all these different triggers. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be working on that for the next six months, which is really exciting. Getting to play a lot of instruments in this room, you know, a lot of, a lot of folk instruments, you know, banjo and a lot of slide and things like that. Um, and uh, building the YouTube channel every week, just continually thinking of topics that uh, we want to dive into on, on, um, composition and songwriting. Mm. So I think focusing on those two, yeah, for the next couple of months, that'll get me through to the end of the year. And then I've got a production schedule that I've got to put together for January. So yeah, it's, um, it's going to be a really busy end of the year. Yeah. I hope your YouTube goes well. Um, hope oh, the channel takes off. And, Thank you. Uh, 
you know, you reach the million subscribers one day. Is that your <laughs> end goal? Or are you you going to monetize it? That's what I'm uh, pushing. Yeah, well, we we do um we do have what are we at? I think we're at eighteen thousand seven hundred subscribers at the moment, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. and you know that's that's been such a roller coaster, and and I've learned so much about YouTube just doing that. But we don't really have a a, a target in mind. We just want to keep building it and using using it as a great platform to reach a lot of people um with short form content or you know medium form content i think that's the really exciting part that you can create you can create a video about a, a topic like you know chord choices diatonic chord systems or something mm -hmm. something that's a piece of music theory that you've broken down and you can make a 10 minute video and then have you know thousands or tens of thousands of people watch it and then you get these great comments and you get to go back and forth with people and mm -hmm. it's just it's just a really exciting platform because it's it's sort of what I feel like I do in the classroom, except you're doing it with hundreds of thousands or millions of people. You know, that that's a really that's a that's a pretty big thrill. So, yeah, Ben, uh, we've got about eight minutes left. Um, anything you want to say before we finish the show? Where could people find you on your social media as well or find your music? Oh, yeah. Online? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the uh, the. YouTube channel is how to write songs. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll, I'll put a link for you in the show notes. Um, and yeah, we've got, um, we've got our Instagram channels and we've got, uh, we've got our Udemy platform. So Udemy is great at the moment because it's allowing us to create these short courses that people can, can do that really, um, it takes the idea of YouTube, but it puts them in sequence. So, mm -hmm. so we've been able to make a lot of these courses in order, which is one of the big frustrations with YouTube, you know, that th there's, there's all this content, but trying to put it in the right order so that people can learn sequentially. That's, that's tricky. So Udemy has been fantastic for that. And we're just going to keep releasing more courses on topics that, uh, that people are asking for. And, um, and yeah, I, I guess I, I'm keen to know where you're going to take, uh, where you want to take your, your work next my work hopefully get uh you know starts getting sales on 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 the royalty free libraries uh reach yeah. the one day million subscribers uh yeah being a film so i'm very open to opportunities plus the podcast as well and yeah. uh yeah just just taking a day at a time you know so yeah are you um are you doing much composing at the moment uh, not at the moment, as I was doing earlier this year, I entered into a few film scoring competition. So I've got a portfolio mm. on my channel, but I'm just yeah. uploading samples on, uh, on the royalty free libraries of 30 second jingles. Oh, great. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Great. You could just keep doing it. I will. <laughs>